So it's been a few months since we talked about calcium, and so I wanted to go back and talk about it again, because um, I know there's new people, and some of you might have missed it. So calcium is an important thing, an important part of your, your diet, and I wanted to talk about it a little bit. Um, one thing to be aware of is that if you are ingesting animal products, they do leach calcium from your body. Mm -hmm. um, animal protein is made of amino acids. Protein is amino acids, and animal protein specifically raises the acidic level of your body. And so your body, to offset that, uses calcium. And it leaches that calcium from your muscles and um, possibly from your bones. That's where it leaches calcium from. We've talked about how when it, when it leaches calcium to offset the... Um, the acidity, it can also leach with it some of the lead that you have that your body stored in your bones to keep it away, you know, out of your system. So that's a problem. So high animal products is going to you know, create more loss of calcium. And if, obviously if you're losing more calcium, you need to take in more calcium. That makes sense. I, I thought I read an article, maybe, uh, maybe I'm wrong, about how they, they're starting to link osteoporosis with um, eating high protein or animal products mm -hmm. because eventually it starts leaking the calcium from your bones so you get that as you age you start having that the, and we've talked before about how they think that the muscle wasting that happens as you age may not be just a normal part of aging it may be because of the high levels of animal protein right. that we ingest mm -hmm. so that it may be that the muscle loss and the bone loss isn't an aging thing it's a, a diet related thing science is still new on that but definitely something to consider also if you're taking in a lot of caffeine caffeine also obviously acidic so your body's going to be using calcium to offset that acidity as well um, the interesting thing is that your body will absorb as much calcium as it needs, assuming that it's coming through the system. Your body's really good at regulating that, so it will absorb it. Um, but 30%, only 30% of the calcium in cow's milk is bioavailable, whereas if you eat broccoli, it's 50% bioavailable. So it's a, a little more bioavailable if you're eating plant-based than if you're trying to get it from, um, from your dairy. And I think it's uh, something to consider is that when you take in dairy for calcium, you're also taking in animal protein, which is being used to offset the acidity, so you end up the offsetting fighting, yeah. the, yeah, that's a fighting thing. If you're, so animal protein isn't the great oh, thing. God. <laughs> Good morning, Brandy. It's good to see morning, you. Morning, Brandy. Um, so taking in milk or cheese or whatever for your calcium isn't a great option because it's being offset by the protein that's in it and your body having to offset that acidity using mm -hmm. calcium. So then people think, well, maybe I'll just take calcium supplements. Mm -hmm. there, there is a, side, a downside to that as well. Now, I will say this caveat. We didn't say this the last time, and I uh, learned from someone that they stopped taking their calcium supplement because of what we said. If you are taking a medication that actively leaches calcium from your system and your doctor has you on a calcium supplement to offset that, don't stop taking don't it stop without taking having a conversation with, with your, your doctor. doctor. Yes, not with us, with your doctor. <laughs> well, the person that uh, last time did didn't talk to us because nope. I would have told her don't stop taking it. But if you're taking a medication that leaches calcium from your system, you're going to need your calcium supplement and the risks that I'm going to share with you are offset by that need. If, however, you don't have that issue, there's some things you can, should consider before you take a calcium supplement. Um, supplements increase the heart, a heart attack risk, which I thought was interesting. I was like, well, why would that be? What happens when you take a calcium supplement is you dump a whole bunch of calcium into your system and it spikes the calcium in your blood. Um, which makes sense, right? If you're eating it in plants, your body's going to absorb it more slowly. It's going to go into your system kind of over the course of the digestion. But when you take a supplement, it kind of just dumps into your system. And that makes your blood easier to clot, which means if you are prone to having a heart attack, That's not good. a calcium supplement is going to spike your risk right. because of the, so, making it easier to clot. Right. So, and my only thing is, so if a doctor does tell you to take a calcium supplement and you are, you do have heart conditions, I'd have the conversation because sometimes, and not intentionally, they may overlook one thing for another because they're, they're always prescribing so many drugs and right. there's so many different interactions going on that if you have a heart condition and somebody's recommending that you take a calcium supplement, bring that issue up. Right. You know? Right. We want you to stick around for a very, very, very long time. It's true. Um, the, the government actually says not to supplement except in rare occasions because of the heart attack risk. So it, it's definitely not. 
uh, something the government even recommends. Um, the other thing to consider is that calcium intake is not related to fractures, which um, I thought that was interesting. Think, it's, yeah. it's not related to hip fractures, so taking a supplement doesn't change whether you're going to fracture your hip or not. I would love to see the study that talks about um, eating a, the standard American diet and taking a calcium supplement where they said it doesn't affect hip fractures, and then eating plant-based but not taking a calcium supplement and see what that looks. I know that to eating plant-based reduces fractures. I've definitely seen studies like that. So there's, go ahead. No, I was just going to say the thing about all these studies and all this research when, when you're comparing diets, it's they're difficult because it's hard to know what people actually consume. That's true. A lot of these studies are done by, you know, trust, you know, by the honor system. Um, so unless you're going to lock people up for a year and, and, you and know, feed them like this is what right. you're eating. One group feeds this, one group feeds that. It's yeah. really hard for these studies. And so what happens is they have to look at these, these civilizations where there are these areas, where the blue zone areas where people are living longer, right. and then discover what type of diets they have. Right. They did do a risk-benefit um, kind of study, and they found that if you treat 1,000 people with a calcium supplement for five years, it, will, it equals 14 heart attacks, 10 strokes, and 13 deaths that wouldn't have happened if they hadn't been on a calcium supplement. And that has to be weighted against preventing 26 fractures. So, I don't know. I would rather eat plants and, and not risk heart attack, okay. stroke, and death. And, and, and okay, again, to be clear with that is... You can get all the calcium you need eating plants. Right. And right. It, well, and obviously, if you're not eating animal products, you need less calcium True. because your body's not leaching it mm -hmm. to offset the acidity. Um, there is no agreement on actually how much, how much calcium your body needs. Um, there's nothing that says this is the right amount. There, I, as far as I know, there's no RDA on it, what I could find. Um, but you can get 500 to 1,000 milligrams a day from food eating plant-based, so that's good. 10 million Americans have osteoporosis. It's costing $17.9 billion annually. Pharmaceutical loves it. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, fractures cost between $1.5 million and $2 million a year. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's awesome. Plants and bone health isn't just for health, uh, for cal from calcium, potassium, magnesium, fiber, and uh, B, B vitamins are also in plants, which are really good for your bone health, plus vitamin C. So eat your veggies, your fruits, your beans. They help reduce pip fracture. Like I mentioned, mm -hmm. eating plant-based is going to help. Need a variety. That's always the best bet. Right? And so there's a couple of different things. You have your osteoblasts, which are the uh, little cells that make bones, and your oste osteoclasts, which remove old bones. And so what you want is them, for them to work in tandem. Obviously, you don't want to remove old bone faster than you're making new bone. You don't want to make new bone faster than you're removing old bone. You want it to make sure that it's um, balanced. And but free radicals can uh, make that balance off be off balance, which means you're getting more bone loss. It's replacing, it's removing bone faster than it's replacing it. And free radicals obviously are, come from can come from eating um, animal products. Right. So you want your antioxidants to be up, which is blueberries, why blueberries, goji berries, Every plants morning, in general. I show again. Because your anti if you raise your antioxidants, it's going to lower the free radicals that your body's creating from like oxygen, which you can't really avoid. I don't recommend you stop breathing to avoid oxygen. <laughs> um, almonds help. Uh, let's see. Food intake at meals should be the same or more calories than taken in through nuts. I don't know why I have that note on here, but I, I do. You do. So I do. But so, but basically, um, I we recommend that you get your calcium through plants. Plants have a lot of calcium in them. It's not something you have to worry about. And because you're not, if you're not eating animal products, you're going to be getting um, plenty of calcium just by because by default because you are eating so many and plants. You're leaching less now. If you are eating the standard American diet, you are probably not going to take in enough plants to get the calciums you need to offset the amount of calcium your body is using to uh, deal with the uh, acidity from the, from the meat that you're eating. So if you are eating the standard American diet, I am not talking to you. You, you probably need a calcium supplement even though there's a risk associated with it. But as you move away from that, you aren't going to need your supplement anymore. And we talk about it a lot. If you're eating plant-based, you probably don't need any supplements except vitamin B12 and vitamin D. Right. I mean, I, we've talked, we talk about it all the time is that we used to spend hundreds of dollars a month on supplements. That's true. Multivitamins, protein powders, you know, this, that, the next thing, just it kept adding up. So every year we added something else, you know, because some new research. I mean, probiotics. I mean, 
Don't need those anymore either. Don't need, yeah, I mean, and what we discovered is basically B12 and vitamin D because of the zone that we live in. There's not enough sun here. Right. We've got to change that. Yes, we're going to probably change that someday. <laughs> um, but that's it. So, um, yeah, but that's what I wanted to share about calcium. Um, as with anything we share with you, it's a knowledge based thing. Make it, you know, Educate yourself, make the decisions right for you, have a conversation with your doctor, but know the risks. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I worry about people who do things just by rote, by default, because, and don't know the risks. And right. so that's what I wanted to share. And I always say, we've always done this, is that, as we said, most doctors are not, trade, are not trained in, in nutrition. nutrition. Yeah. Right? So if you hear something, whether from us or from some research that you've done, that, and then they come and, and recommend you take something that you've read that isn't smart to take, have the conversation because there could be an absolute legitimate reason why you need to take it if a doctor tells you to take it, you know. But there also could be they just don't, they under, just don't, don't understand. They don't and if they aren't knowledge. willing to have the conversation, you need a different doctor. You definitely need a different your doctor. Your doctor needs to be a partner in your health, not a god in your life telling right. you how to live it. So exactly. Definitely. Um, anything else you want to add about calcium? Ah, doctor, I think that's it. All right. Make sure you like and share. I forgot to tell you that yesterday. Mm -hmm. Please let other people know about us. If you are a member of our website, remember that our live Q&A is tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern. We will ask you if you remember, do not share your link with other people. That is for a mem members and people who have taken our master, uh, master class. class. And we do it as a service to them. So please don't share that link with people who are not members. Um, our website is rnrjourney.com. If you'd like to become a member, you could absolutely go there and do that. If you become a member today, we will add you to tonight's Q&A if you mm -hmm. want to attend. We will make a point to make sure that happens if you join today. Our webinar is at howtofeedahuman.com. Correct. I think that's all I've got. The only thing I'm going to add is that if you like our page or follow us, make right. sure you go to notifications and click all posts. And that's the way you can be assured that every time we are live, you are notified. Otherwise, Facebook may not tell you. Exactly. I think that's all we've got I think for that's it We're going to eat breakfast because you know what? It's not a fasting day. That's right. And so with that, we will say, eat real food, mostly, mostly plants. plants. Have a great day, guys. Have a good one. We'll see you tomorrow. Stay warm. Yeah.